everybody, welcome back. This is the follow-up of the Rogue Monk single weapon fighting dagger damage build. This is just to give you an idea of what it looks like endgame Reaper-wise. This is um, Grim and Barret R8. Um, kind of just with the splash part, you can see no, no real tank, no real healer, just kind of random group thrown together. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I thought the end game Reaper damage was still pretty good. Um, your survivability is very low. Um, so you definitely rely on others to survive. With a crowd control or holding aggro, um, you don't do super well holding the aggro on your own. Just not enough, um, not enough defenses. So as you can see, um, if you might to get back into it, do not do that. Right from the beginning. As this quest goes on, I start I started paying a little more attention because right off the bat you're around the corner and get one shotted because I was the first one in there. So never a good idea with the first one through the door with this build. Um, definitely you're a damage dealer, so you need to be alive to do the damage. And if you get all the aggro, you will not be alive to do the damage. Um, we did have pretty decent insta killers here in this group as well. You'll see that through the quest. Um, it always makes playing a melee. I feel like when you have really good insta killers and you're playing a melee, you get a little greedy because you get bored. Because insta killers just do too well. Um, so that definitely takes effect here. As I was running a few quests with this group, this wasn't the first one I ran with them. But anyways, we pop back up. <clears throat> we'll turn on our Vistani Fortune to get our boost. Like I said, this is not, you have endless action um, action boost here as you get the the um, them reloaded with legendary dreadnought quite often. So this will be your first real good chance of damage here um, since it's a boss they can't kill it that fast. Well, that is helpless damage, but I still think it's pretty decent for R8. Um, definitely one of the higher melee damage builds I've done when you when you take into having quite a bit of attack speed as well. May not be the biggest number build but the fact that you get attack speed and sneak attack onto it really helps boost that damage as well for DPS again see that guy running right at me I don't want anything to do with him because he will kill me I want to go to the people who are already crowd controlled so I can do my damage because that's the point of my build I do um, normally play more beefy melee builds than this. I normally do things that can tank a little better or at least off tank. Um, so I'm not overly used to this play style of the glass cannon. But it was fun. It's always fun to do a decent amount of damage. Um, I did not spend a lot of time on this build. As you'll find out here in just a second. I am very glass cannon. And a lot of times I forget that I'm actually a rogue too. Um, so I'll go back here. I'm pretty sure I tried to find the trap here and actually fail it. Because <laughs> I've still got all my level 21 gear um, for rogue stuff. But that's right. I was just doing this just as a kind of a stat check to see if I actually could disable any of them or not. Which I got the second one. Um, if I really wanted to, you could grab some better rogue gear for level 32 and I'm sure you'd be just fine. Grab better intel item as well as I'm pretty sure mine's just a basic plus 10 so again here you always want to try to drop the aggro whether that's through shiv or just good positioning um, an R8 and if you're not if you are not um, beefy and there's a fear reaper you guys need to find the fear reapers because those things stack quickly here this was my fault I accidentally triggered the extra pack so I immediately use that dreamscape to drop all my aggro. I turned on my uncanny dodge as well just to be safe. Because there was multiple reapers there. And I got clipped by one. As you can see I used the assassin trick on the reaper. So that I could start proccing sneak attack damage. If you see in this reaper 
DPS to sneak attack damage is just about even with your first number of damage. Obviously not for crits, but just for normal DPS. Um, so it's always handy to keep that up as much as possible. Here we always let the wizard was leading most of these just from the fact of um, providing the crowd control. And then we also had a monk also doing some crowd control as well. Outside of that, this was really just a, a, a pug group. Um, it's still, most of these quests still went pretty decently. Anytime you have a good insta killer, um, your quests normally go pretty decent. And then our actual boss DPS wasn't bad either. So here just waiting to buff up, going to end fighting here in just a second. Like I said before, this build does not have very many buffs, or self buffs at least. Um, really this is just some overview of the gameplay, wanting to show you guys what the reaper damage looked like before I moved on to the next build. Um, but I thought it was pretty decent. Um, definitely I'm sure there's some, some more stuff I could gear out, especially on the defensive side or even on a little more damage, like I said, I didn't fully gear out my, my build. If you're wanting to see what I was using, um, please check out the other video where I actually broke down the build. And it shows you what I intended to use and what I actually ended up using. So you kind of get an idea. Um, but this is just the end of Grim and Barret. I just at least wanted to post something so you guys could see what the Reaper damage looked like since I posted a, um, the legendary hard uh, Feywild raid to show you what the normal damage looked like. But... Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Um, we'll finish up this boss in just a minute on the video.